Hello, this is Sarah Lee. I'm a little on edge right now because it took me a few moments to get my uh, recorder app to work. Although I have been clearing the cache and stuff off my phones, it, they still fail to work and it's extremely frustrating. I'm going to make an, another adjustment right now. Alright, put my phone on airplane mode in case someone's uh, spying on my phone and... Uh, Gripping on my apps. I don't know if someone's jamming my apps or not. I'm really freaking out. Okay. Deep breath, everyone. Yeah, if, it, if it's you guys upstairs, I'm onto you. If it's someone on the internet, I'm onto you. Don't think I'm some idiot that doesn't understand about stealth technology. Someone's uh, messing around and trying to sabotage what I'm doing here. In my uh, pro on my project of uh, integrating mental and social health. Okay. Oh, unless I decide to use this for fun, that piece for fun, I will delete this part off my uh, episode. Anyway, it's been a very eventful week. Um, I've done a couple of episodes on my uh, podcasts and on my YouTube channel throughout the week, and. Um, I'm dealing with something again. I'm very happily in in an arrangement with with uh, three other people. Yes, I'm a polyamorous human with an assigned gender of female, according to my Google account. Though my gender is energy, I'm glad they told me that I can write in an other. I'm glad Google is getting hip about write-ins, because I can say my gender is energy. I don't want to let my assigned gender define me, not only because that's not all I am, but because historically and even in, in the present, females have been seen as, and still are seen as, make no mistake, a subordinate race here on Earth. Not just in America, but I live in America, and it's still happening in America, and it's happening in other English-speaking, predominantly English-speaking countries, and it's even happening in other countries. And uh, as it's continuing to happen, I don't let it define me. My gender is energy. And um, I've been having kind of a hard time with um, my week. Um... I got very happily established in my arrangement as a non-binary, polyamorous person. And um, last week, or was it week before last? I don't, I don't remember. Okay, it might have been week before last. The weeks are getting a little bit blurry. I became limerent again. And uh, get this, um, I don't know... If, if you're listening to my uh, podcast on Hubhopper, or my podcast that was generated by Hubhopper, I have several podcasts now called Integrating Mental Social Health. Um, I um, made a podcast episode about going to an organ concert, and um, my uh, partner's were elsewhere. One of them was at work, the other one was at home, and the other one was uh, doing something else. And um, I couldn't, uh, you know, be with them. And um, so I went, I went by myself to this organ concert, and um, at the organ concert I ran into a friend from my childhood. And he had a companion, and he didn't know if she was going to show up and be with him. It turns out she did, but he didn't know if she was coming. So uh, he, ran in, he ran into me. We had a little interaction. And he's Romanian. He has this really alluring uh, European accent that just friggin' takes me down through the floor and up through the ceiling. And... Um, I have reason to believe now that my alleged mental illness that I've had all my life is limerence. And limerence is from when you were traumatized. 
And some, some people will say that limerence and addiction is because you like it so much. And I'll take it a step further. Many of us like it because we did not like how we were feeling before we discovered our limerent interest. Before we discovered our uh, love, our alleged love interest. Before we discovered our addictive, uh, addictive substance or addictive object or addictive, addictive interest. What, whatever it is, drug of choice, whatever you want to call it. Before we discovered it and how good it made us feel, me feel, I'll speak for myself. I did not like how I was feeling. I did not like how it was feeling before I met my aunt. I did not like how I was feeling before I met my stepfather. I did not like how I was feeling before I met my crushes at school. I did not like how I was feeling before I fell in love for the first, second, third, umpty, whatever time. I did not like how I felt. How I felt was I felt empty. I felt dark. I felt gray. I felt bored. I felt tired. I felt empty. I just felt like... Like, um, like I wasn't alive. And like I had this uh, dysphoric, uh, painful feeling inside me all the time. And when I fell in love, when I met someone that I adored, someone that just took me through the bottom of the floor and up through the top of the, the roof, that feeling changed and I felt like I was becoming human again. Human or whatever. And I didn't have that feeling when I wasn't limerent. I didn't have that feeling when I wasn't practicing an addictive substance. Um, I also get the same feeling, or at least a related or akin feeling, when I'm eating my favorite foods. And many of my favorite foods are sweets, or they have sugar in them, sugar and salt in them. And I've lost six of my teeth now, including the tooth I lost last week that I had to pay for because... Uh, my Medi-Cal was stupidly, stupidly, idiotically not activated, even though I was approved by the county for it for another year. Had to pay $800 plus for a tooth extraction. And um, I don't know if I'm going to get that money back, but um, I got to deal with uh, my insurance. I got to deal with that. And um, limerence can distract me for a while. But when I'm in pain or when I'm in medical danger, such as having an abscess threatening to spread through my mouth and into my head, that's no good. Limerence is not going to help. Limerence is not going to help me function. It might take me through the roof for a while, but after that, I'm dead. I'm a friggin' dead shell of a and shell of an organism. You know, I, I, I don't function, I'm exhausted, and my schedule got disrupted again. I'm not doing upside-down nighttime schedules still. I'm still doing days, but um, I'm getting up later now because I'm staying up later, either from anxiety or from being limerent on uh, this person that um, I ran into at the organ concert two weeks ago. I didn't go to the organ concert uh, last week. And blessedly, I'm glad I didn't, but I was dealing with him uh, all week long. We were calling and texting. I even find, I even let him come over to my house, I think, a couple of times. In fact, he, uh, he spent the night, I think, once, and my partner that lives here with me allowed him to because she knew instinctively she couldn't stop it. But um, he slept on the other side of the room. And we uh, slept in bed, as usual. You know, nothing happened, but it's like uh, he he was concerned about me because I was recovering from my tooth extraction. And, um, you know, we we felt like we felt when we, were, when we were children again. Or when I was a child again, he was older. A lot of my uh, limerent uh, interests were older. Older people or adults. And... Um, this morning, uh, he had spent the night again, and um, my mentor uh, told me to, uh, my mentor and I Skyped, and he told me to um, send him out, and I did, just as I sent out a couple of my other ones uh, over the holiday season last year. I finally told them they needed to leave my life, 
because uh, they were a distraction, although albeit a very good feeling distraction, they were a distraction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea when that's going to change, but I've used it to cope all my life. And um, yes, I'm limerent with my partners too, but uh, at least they're the ones that I want to spend my life with. I don't want to spend my life with uh, VRL. In fact, VRL has a girlfriend, and we didn't have we didn't have relations all week, but we did have a couple of kisses. And um, I am to confess to his lady friend. There's a possibility that I that I might be a homeworker to her. And um, thank God they're not they're not living together or married, but um, they're dating. And uh, what what I did and what he did was wrong. And um, it's because limerence is a really powerful thing. And it's not an excuse. You know, make no mistake, I know it's not an excuse. And um, I have to repent. I'm a, Christ I'm, a new I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian for a year now. And I'm, I'm repenting. Forgive me, I have sinned. I committed adultery. I, I had I didn't have relations, but I had almost as good as a romantic affair with um, someone outside my arrangement. My arrangement with my partners is like pe being married monogamously. It's as good as being married uh, monogamously. One of my other partners last night read me the riot act and said, Jen Carroll, I have to accept your situation because I love you so much and I've chosen to. But um, if you continue along this path, it's going to affect how I relate to you. It's going to affect my relationship with you. And you're going to keep coming over here and, and feeling toxic shame. And you're going to keep uh, complaining about how, how uh, weird you're feeling. Is that what you want? It's not what I want. She read me the riot act. And she said, in the meantime, being able to accept that you're human and that you have these feelings. To accept something is to change something. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it, Sarah? And I didn't, I didn't know what to say. Aura told me the same thing. Sherry's probably, I don't know what Sherry's going to say to me, but if I, if I go to the... If I go to the uh, concert tonight without uh, VRL, you know, I, I hope to God I don't see them there tonight. If, um, you know, if I, if I go there tonight with uh, Sherry, God, if I go there tonight with Sherry, one of my, my other partners, if I go there with her, and I'm able to deal with it, She's gonna. She she knows already. In fact, she knows. Ani told her. So uh, yeah, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you're using this uh, episode as a sensation, I feel sorry for you because uh, this is not meant as a sensation. This is a very serious issue, and um, even even many licensed therapists can't handle it, and um, I can barely handle it. But I've studied it at length, and I intend to take it by storm. I do. Limerence. Limerence is a very, very serious issue, and I think it should be in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. I truly do. I think uh, we should even receive government benefits for it, even if it's a temporary thing. I know that when my aunt uh, hurt her knee, um, she received government, she received state benefits, um, when my roommate, uh, hurt himself, uh, a while back during the pandemic, he received, uh, disability benefits in the state. And, um, it was temporary, and he had to do without them after a while, after he recovered, but, um, limerence... I believe can be as crippling as a messed up knee. It can be as crippling as a work 
injury. And um, it can maybe even leave an injury that's permanent. I'll even open my mind to that because if limerence was my issue when I got disability, when I got the uh, SSI checks and when I got the uh, Medi-Cal, um, when I uh, got, this is kind of a risky thing for me to talk about, when I got um, benefits after I was institutionalized at age five, um, they couldn't even treat me. They didn't even treat my problem. Because back in the 1970s, I don't think they even believed, I don't think limerence was even a familiar word, even though Dorothy Tenev might have coined it that long ago. I'm not sure when she, I'll have to look that up, do some more research. I don't, I don't know everything, you guys. Just that study doesn't mean I know the whole world. But um, if it's not in the DSM right now, it wasn't back then. And I don't know if it, I don't know if it uh, would have constituted disability. But if you're anything like me, if an alcoholic, let's see, if an alcoholic is dis- dysfunctional and disabled while he's not able to get sober and live his life sober, if he's not even able to do that, that should constitute at least a temporary disability. And um, that's why uh, Social Security does reviews to see if you're permanently disabled or not, to see if you have a permanent injury or a permanent illness, or or if you still have the disability that you had when you were diagnosed a year ago or whatever, whenever, seven years ago, three years ago, or whenever. I don't care. But um, limerence was my problem. Limerence disabled me. I did not have the tools or the skills or the experience or the wherewithal to um, the Constitution to deal with it for a long time. And I intend to learn how to deal with it right now, even if it takes the rest of my life, even if I have to die trying. I want to learn how to deal with it one day at a time. In the meantime, I need the disability. In the meantime, I need the health insurance. In the meantime, I need I need help from the government. In the meantime, I need uh, not, not to enable me, but to uh, carry me through while I, while I heal so I can uh, deal with this later on. I swear to God, if I have to work, if, I, if I'm retired, you know, when I'm a senior citizen, when I'm like 67 years old, um, I may have to uh, work or uh, draw a retirement. But I'm telling you, Accountability. I'm in the behavioral module right now. I take accountability right now, but I have lost 50 years of my life because it wasn't dealt with. Out of ignorance from society, from my government, and from myself, and from my family, it was not dealt with. You know, being, being abused and being, having Stockholm Syndrome and um, liking limerence so much because something was missing. The alcoholic will say, I drank just because I like to. I've read many stories in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And if the the people that were in that book did not have dysfunctional families or abuse, they at least had boredom. And boredom can be just as traumatic and just as messed up. And it can be just as draining and empty as having been abused. Because I looked up boredom in the dictionary and it, it had a definition like weariness. When you're weary, when, when you're tired, when you feel like you've got this discomfort, and then suddenly you drink, or you, you, you have alcohol, or you, have, you fall in love, or you have a drug, whatever, you have something sweet, you're going to want more of it. You are going to fucking want more of it if you're a human being. Otherwise, there's, some, there's something wrong with you if you don't. This is the way we have to deal with things. But they're not good for us. We deal with the issue. We deal with the boredom. We deal with something. We deal with what's missing. We deal with our social issues. We deal with our mental issues. We deal with our emotional issues. We deal with our health problems. And we friggin' recover. Be safe, everyone.